hope. That doesn't distract you tonight, but Alex broke the ladder, and no, I'm kidding. Uh, it, was, it was the same thing as last time, wasn't it? I mean, didn't the exact same thing happen last time we used it? Yep. We went to go pull the rope, and no more rope. Yeah. Needs a uh, more serious rope. That's some twine. Uh, uh, but uh, no, seriously, um, we'll get it. I'm not worried about it. It's not the end of the world. But um, I told everybody we're going to have a faith-based message tonight again and have everybody climb the ladder, see how much you really have faith. Uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, how many of y'all think you could climb that ladder no problem? Okay, good. That's some courageous people. How many of you don't think you could climb that ladder? You just raised your hand to say that you could. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Okay, put your hand down. You don't think you could climb it? Could. It's a possibility. It's a possibility. It's a possibility, Dad. It's possible. Somebody's been drinking. Uh, okay. <laughs> I want to finish. I'd like to finish the uh, message from last week about uh, our motivation for the bus ministry, the why, the why not, and the why of the bus ministry. Now, um, we are commanded, go ye therefore and teach all nations, right? Baptizing all nations, teaching all nations, uh, whatsoever Jesus commanded. Uh, so uh, when people say, oh, the Bible, that's for the Jews. I'm like, no, it says all nation, whatsoever things I have commanded you. Uh, so the things that Jesus commanded to the apostles are the things that we are supposed to teach other nations, as well as many of the other principles and convictions of the Bible. But uh, the purpose of the bus ministry, the purpose of the bus ministry. So before we hop into tonight's message, um, last week we talked about the why not. The why nots of the bus ministry. Don't start a bus ministry uh, uh, if these are your reasons. And then tonight will be the why. The why. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. Thank you for um, uh, the call family coming through town. Um, uh, Lord, it's uh, nice to meet other folks uh, from other places who love the same Lord and believe the same God and read the same Bible and uh, have the same standards you, ever, you never met in your life. But uh, there's something akin to it. Uh, and then Heavenly Father, I, I, I thank you for Jack. Jack Polk coming to church today and getting saved. <laughs> Lord, what a blessing that is uh, that he came. Um, my heart rejoiced over that, and I'm, I'm really glad Brother Dan took initiative to do that and was able to give him a ride after church and put some food in his belly. And uh, Lord, I, um, I'm grateful for folks who know the drill around here and they don't have well wait for the pastor to do it all uh, anybody can win anybody uh, lord thank you for soul winners i'd ask that you'd bless our message tonight in jesus name amen now bus ministry is something that we're uh, most of us in this room uh have been pretty familiarized with over the years the bus ministry you might have been a rider you might have been a worker you might have been a, a driver a captain no matter what the case is you had something to do with the bus ministry uh, everything from Goldfish Sunday to Baseball Sunday to Candy Sunday to the world's largest banana split Sunday to um, the fair to anything and everything that we've ever done with the buses and for church promotion. Uh, excuse me. <coughs> Those allergies tell Miss Pip I'm blaming her. Uh, no, she's, it's between us. Uh, but... Um, uh, the buses, the buses, the bus ministry. Now, I talked about uh, why not the bus ministry. Why should we not do the bus ministry? Now, we should not do the bus ministry. A quick rundown. Now, we should not start a bus ministry as any type of symbol of, uh, uh, or status. Well, we're in the independent fundamental Baptist denomination. We have to have buses. We, we have to. That's the wrong reason. It's the wrong reason. So we can say that we are a part of some sort of movement or some sort of establishment. That's a wrong reason. That's a completely wrong reason. Uh, no sort of uh, symbol or status or because everyone's doing it or because no one's doing it. Uh, uh, if your reason for doing it because no one else is doing it uh, is to just kind of show up everyone and one up everyone, it's the wrong reason. Number two, it's wrong to start the bus ministry just to boost our attendance. 
Well, you know, we're so close to 100, or we're so close to 200, we're so close to this, this number. If we, I, I bet if we started a bus ministry, we could get over that number. I'm all for attendance. I'm all for numbers. There's a Bible in the, uh, there's a Bible in the book. There's a book in the Bible called Numbers. God does not, not care. God doesn't not care about numbers. God is very attentive to numbers, more than we even recognize. But God knows, and God is aware, and God keeps track of numbers. Now, I think it's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's, it's just as wrong as a, a, a Biden in the White House. It's just as wrong to start a bus ministry uh, for, uh, to, to uh, boost our attendance as it is for anything else. It's just as wrong. Number three, number three, it's wrong to start a bus ministry simply to compete with another church. It's wrong to start a bus ministry just to compete. People are not scores. People are people. People are not a, a, a herd that we herd in and we count them by head as they come in. And uh, we don't know their name. We don't know their birthdays. We don't know their addresses. We don't really even understand the things they're going through at home. And we just kind of see them as numbers. So we can all, the staff can gather up on Sunday night after church or on Monday morning and compare uh, uh, and compare and say, what did we do last year at this time? What did we do? Listen, I'm all for that. But as long as it's Bible based, as long as if you keep the main thing, the main thing, and the main thing is Jesus. The main one is Jesus. The main thing is giving honor to God. The main thing is souls. But we've got to remember that these ones we bring in on buses are souls. We cannot forget that. But I'm not start. We're not starting a bus ministry. Woo, I'm losing it. We are not starting a bus ministry. Let me manipulate my voice. We're not starting a bus ministry. We're <laughs> Don't make that a clip, brother Alex. Uh, we're, uh, <laughs> we're not starting. We're not. We're not starting a bus ministry to compete with Roanoke or to compete with New Heights or to compete with. Who are some of the other ones back in the old days? Uh, uh, Calvary Temple. They ran vans, but we're not good for them. I want them to. I want them, if they are Jesus preaching and soul winning and baptism, if they are New Testament churches, I want them to. Because God Almighty knows that Three Rivers Baptist Church can't reach every single one of them. We can't reach them all. We can reach a heap of them, but we can't reach all of them. So the more the better. The more the better. Now it's wrong. It's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong to start a bus ministry as status. It's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong to start a bus ministry just to boost our attendance. And it's, it's, it's just as wrong to do those, and it's just as wrong to start uh, a bus ministry just to compete with other churches. Um, uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's wrong. Uh, and I have some other why not start the bus ministry, and I wrote them down as excuses. Here are some excuses of not to start a bus ministry. Because it's hard work. It's commitment. It's cold, it's hot, it's aggravating sometimes. You miss out on things sometimes where you're like, oh man, so-and-so invited you out to dinner and you're like, I can't, or out to lunch and you're like, sorry, I can't go. I've got a bus full of kids. I gotta take the dinner, I gotta take the lunch. Or I gotta, I have to take home. I can't, I can't, I can't do that. I'm sorry, I'm committed to the bus ministry. I, I can't do that. And people go, oh, I might miss out on food. I don't wanna like commit to a ministry or anything. Come on, folks. Let's, let's have some grown-up Christianity. Let's have some grown-up Christianity. Uh, the Bible says a just man swear through his own hurt and changes not. So when you give your word over to a commitment, don't, don't quit on it. Don't stop on it because, oh, so-and-so said they were going to take me out to Pizza Hut. Really? You'd sell your name out? You'd sell your word out for Pizza Hut? And I like Pizza Hut. And I like Papa John's. I like all that stuff. However... <coughs> It ain't worth my name. My dad always told me, he said, what's your name worth? You know, there's no price. You can put on your name. There's no, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. You can't put a price on your name. It's all you have. The bus ministry is a commitment. It's a commitment. And if we, if we get into the bus ministry, when we get into the bus ministry, I hope God will surround the bus ministry with people who are just trying to reach people who people, that God will give a burden to people who have a burden for people. 
Uh, I want us to steer clear. I said this last week. I want us to steer clear of ever thinking that we are in the, um, the business of community or social rehabilitation. The object of our church and the purpose of our church is not to furnish people's homes with furniture, even though I'm, that's, those are good deeds. I'm not for, uh, I'm not, uh, we're not in the business of buying a f- of, of furniture and appliances for people. We're not in the business of, uh, of uh, uh, being a clothes closet or a food bank. We're not in the business of buying people Christmas. We're not in the business of filling people's gas tanks. We're not in the business of um, uh, paying people's bills. However, we have done all of that, haven't we? Many of you have donated dollars to do those things. Dollars to do that. Why? Why? Because we had just won them to Christ. We're just going to leave them. We won them to Christ and they expressed the need. We brought them into the fold of Three Rivers Baptist Church and they were coming and they were here and they were faithful and then there was a need and they were, well, sorry, can't help you. Folks, if we can help, we'll help. If we can't, we can't. It's just as plain and simple as that. I told somebody walking out today, I said, listen, I can't make you any promises. I was like, but if you ever need anything, reach out to your church family. I said, I'll ask. Hey, does anybody have or can anybody do or can anybody? I'll ask. You, the answer might be no, but the answer is always no if you don't ask. So ask. Um, uh, uh, but um, we're not, in, get this now, I'm not anti-social rehabilitation. I'm anti-social rehabilitation being our main business. See, we're not in the rehabilitation business. God is in the rehabilitation business. So our business is to be about the father's business and the father's business is lost souls and the father's business are backslidden Christians who are away from the Lord. Bring them back to the fold, welcome them back to the fold, call them back to the fold and go out and reach the ones who've been lost from the fold. That's what we wanna do. That's what we're trying to do. That's our main business. That's what we'll be all about. Be in the business of God's business and that is a, a social salvation, this hair of mine. Miss Pip walked out and she said, Jake, and I've been teetering on it, but, and Jamie said, don't get your hair cut, you'll look weird. Uh, Cause I, I've, I haven't had a haircut since, it doesn't matter, but I've been dealing with it. I wear a hat most days cause I'm sweating and I'm working. And uh, on Saturdays and Sundays and Wednesdays, I brush it over. Brother, I brushed it back on Wednesday and brother Pip came out and he said, you're not in the mafia, are, are you? We just need to know, Brother Jake. If you're having a hard time paying your bills, let us know. Don't revert to, to crime. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I brushed it back. And Brother Pohazi noticed on Wednesday. Would you say Brother Billingsley did that? Brother Billing, who? Yeah. Billington, that's right. Brother Billington did it. Uh, and I was like, okay, well, whoo, slick up my hair back, gonna put it in a ponytail and do it while I can, right? No, 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 amen. Uh, but um, uh, we're in the soul rehabilitation. Soul rehabilitation, not social rehabilitation. Here's the thing. We get the soul. Let, 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 let's bring a soul to Christ and encourage that soul to give their life to Christ. And Christ will do all, the Holy Spirit of God will do all the rehabilitating in that person that person needs or could possibly want. Let God do that. Uh, so any church like ours that is launching out uh, and, and beginning to start a bus ministry, I remember Brother Warren Storm said, don't call it a bus route, call it a bus ministry. It's not your bus route, it's your bus ministry. You have a paper route, you have a pizza route, you have a delivery route, but you don't have a bus route. These people, these kids, these, uh, uh, these folks coming to church on a bus, they're not commodities, they're not a product, they're a people, they're people. So a church like us wanting to start a bus ministry, we have to be willing to pe- take people just like they are just as they are, just how they are in the broken package and torn up package, just like it is. I went to uh, Menards the other day and I got some um, uh, smoke detectors here. I don't have to worry about that anymore because um, Miss uh, Harriton doesn't smoke her marbles on the third anymore, uh, on the third pew. <laughs> 
Ah, uh, that's funny. Uh, if she's not on social media, she'll never see it. Uh, but um, uh, we got new smoke detectors in here and uh, throughout the building. But what I did is I went and I just grabbed a, bo- grabbed a box and I put them in the car and I kept going. And when I got up there, the lady at the ca- cash register, she looked at the box and she turned the box around and it was damaged and taped closed. And she said, do you still want to buy that? You know what I said? No. Last thing I want is to buy a damaged box thinking that the, that the, the, um, uh, the contents, I almost said the innards, the contents, <laughs> the contents would be okay. Only to get up here and get on a ladder and screw it up there and click it on and nothing. I'm like, you know what? Nah, I don't want that damaged box. I'll just go back to the aisle and get a good one. So that's what I did. But that's the opposite of the bus ministry. That's the opposite of ministry. That's the opposite of being a Christian. I'm not saying you got to go out and look for the broken people. We just take them all. Well, I, I, well, hey, we want to invite you to church. Oh, well, you don't know my history. You don't know what's happened. You don't know, hey, I've been in prison. Like, cool, I just got out yesterday. Come with me. Um, I become all things to all men. Amen. Just in prison of, I don't know, depression. You can lie to them. Oh, well, we, wait, we talked in Sunday school about not lying. Don't lie to them. But I'm just saying, what I'm saying tonight is we got to take people just how they are. Just how they are. Bring them to the Lord. Try to get them saved. Try to win the family. Try to win the parents. And then uh, uh, let the Lord work from there. I want to speak to you this, tonight, this evening, on the why of the bus ministry. Now, the why of the bus ministry is uh, just about as old as the Great Commission itself. The why of the bus ministry Um, The Bible commands us to go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in uh, uh, to hear the gospel. It's for for people to be saved. That's what it's supposed to be all about. Um, So what I want to say tonight is the first why, uh, and I'm going to have you open up to some scripture. I want to I want you I want you to see it. I want you to open up to Matthew chapter nine while I'm reading my first point. Matthew chapter nine. Matthew chapter nine. Houston, sit up. Come sit on the front pew. <coughs> Where's your Bible? Yeah. What? He has it. Oh, you do? Hmm. You were just listening intently, weren't you? You were. You were resting on the promises. That's what he was doing. All right. Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. Uh, the first why is to reach lost people who are not saved. That's the first why. Why should we start the bus ministry? Well, um, I got to be honest with you, and, and some of the why nots have been motivations for me, and has had me reevaluate and rebase myself on why the bus ministry. Why? Um, when I first uh, became pastor of the church um, uh, and whatnot, we still had buses rolling. COVID hit, buses kind of quit, but it was fading anyway. Um, you know, we tried keeping it up and running and whatnot, and it just, anyway, uh, I want to get it started again. And the reason I wanted to start it is because it's something we used to do. I want to start the bus ministry because it's what we've always done. That's the reason why you want to start the bus ministry. Well, well, yeah. All right. Wrong. Well, I want to start the bus ministry because it boosts our attendance. That's the reason why? Well, well, it's one of them at least. It's a pretty good one. Wrong. Well, I want to start the bus ministry so it gives some people a place to serve. That's the reason why? Yeah. Wrong. The, The reason why we should start the bus ministry is so we use it as an extension to, as a further extension of the arm of the church to get people saved. We want to get people saved and bring them to church. Hey, I don't care if we never did it or if we've always done it. That's the reason to do it. The reason to start the bus ministry, the reason to have a bus ministry is to get people saved. So uh, whether it's a pastor starting a bus ministry or a church together doing it or, or uh, uh, a little mission somewhere or, or uh, a missionary on the mission field, uh, uh, we could preach for weeks and weeks and weeks and maybe even months on the, the power of the bus ministry and, and, uh, um, uh, and soul winning 
and uh, uh, reaching lost and the Great Commission and all kinds of things like that to get everybody encouraged, to get everybody right on line, lined up and, and, and uh, 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 juiced up to go win souls. Uh, but the Bible says in Matthew chapter 9, verse number 30, um, 36 through 38, but when he saw the multitudes... He was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. It's the laborers, or the, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. So right here, Jesus is telling, uh, telling us that there are multitudes and multitudes and multitudes of people that need to be saved. And not only need to be saved, but yes, want to be saved. It was just a couple of years ago when uh, Saturday soul winning was sort of at its lowest and uh, it really wasn't unfolding like it used to. It really wasn't banging on all cylinders and I had not yet uh, heard the call uh, from the Lord to, to, to surrender to full-time pastoring. And I was just still kind of standing in. And I remember, and now I know, of course, it, was, um, it wasn't the Lord. It was the devil, I'm sure of it. Maybe not the devil himself, but definitely of his ilk. Had, I felt in, in my head and in my heart, people don't want to be saved anymore. Look, religion is just kind of, people don't want to hear that anymore. People don't really want that. You know, they don't want you, they don't want to hear it. They don't believe it. Uh, the world has become so full of knowledge and so full of itself. It doesn't want to hear about Jesus. But that's a flat out lie. That's a lie. That's a lie straight out of hell. Because there's Angel, there's Crystal, there's Jack this morning. Amen. There's uh, 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 Kyler and, uh, uh, and Lily a couple of weeks ago. There's people who are still going, where do we go when we die? What does happen? Is there a God? Is that Jesus guy the real deal? People still do want to be saved. Don't let the devil lie to you and tell you that they don't. The devil is a liar, and fear is a liar, and doubt is a liar. It's a liar. Cowardism, cowardice is a liar. People want to be saved. So the problem, though, is not with the multitude of unsaved people. The problem is not there. The problem is with Christians who will not go out and tell people how to be saved. The problem is not with the unsaved. The problem is with the saved not bringing, them, not bringing people to church. A prayer of mine lately has been, God, give me power, which is just in, not power, but give me influence so I can have converts. I want converts. I know they don't convert to me. They convert to Christ. But I want some converts. I want people sitting on the pew that I brought to Jesus. I want people hitting the water that I invited to church. I want people that I invite to church that Brother Dan doesn't steal and witness to in the back when church is going on. I want converts. I want Brother Poise to get his hands wet again by baptizing them kids. I want converts. I want them, and I'll take a kid, I'll take a teenager, I'll take an adult, and I'll take somebody in their old stages of life. I'll take anybody and everybody who wants to get saved. I don't want to be a sorry Christian who doesn't tell anybody about Jesus. I don't want to be a sorry Christian who's not concerned about with people dying and going to hell. I don't want to be some stinking bump on the log Christian who just sat by and didn't ever do anything besides be judgmental and 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 uh, uh, whistle the tune, so to speak, and um, uh, skip along with the beat of the church. I want the beat of the church to be so holy and so righteous and so close to the throne of God that if I'm not right with God, I'm out of beat. I want our church to be humming along, and if anybody doesn't get along with it, they either get right or get lost. And I don't mean lose their salvation, but I mean get lost and go to a church where you can hide. 
I want folks, you ought to be a soul winner. You ought to be a soul winner. Let's God, if 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 Miss Carrie Mohammed back there can 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 muster up the courage and the spine to go soul winning with Mrs. White, surely you men can. Surely you teenage boys can. Surely you young men can. You ought to have a want to, a want to do it. And they go knocking doors in this neighborhood. They don't care. I mean, Miss White. She doesn't care if it's the biggest, meanest, baddest looking rhino, gorilla, mixed looking dude or woman that comes to the door. Hi. <laughs> she just got that smile, you know. Hi. Miss Carrie's like, this is great. I wish I had their um, charisma. I was going to say naivety. They just believe and love people, you know what I mean? But yeah, their courage. They're just, we're told not to judge people by the cover. By our pastor. And I'm like, don't judge people by their, by, their, by their color, by their cover and by what they're wearing and by how they look. And they go out there and they're like, that's the right thing. And I'm over there going, that guy looks mean. I don't want to talk to him. You know? <laughs> Bless God, you women are courageous women, amen. Uh, but or I'm like, man, she looks mean. I don't want to talk to her. Uh, but um, uh, Brother Alex and I talked to somebody, uh, not yesterday, but the last Saturday before. She came to the door covered in tattoos from the top of her chin to the bottom of her chin to the tips of her toes, you know. And she's like, yeah, you know, people look at me crazy. And I'm like, like this? No. Uh, and, you know, people look at me crazy. and I'm covered in tattoos. I'm like, you're not going to get that here. You're not going to get that here. And I outed Brother Dan, you know. I said, RPA man has an Illuminati tattoo on his head. Uh, he's got 666 tattooed on his head. You just can't see it. He's the Antichrist. Um, but uh, uh, isn't it, judging people how they look, it's, 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 we want to see people saved. People still want to be saved, tattoos and all. People want to be saved, piercings and all. People want to be saved, baggage and all. The problem is not with the multitude the problem is with the prayerless Christian. And I'm not trying to chastise. I'm really not. I'm not trying to rebuke. I'm trying to convict. I'm trying to remind. I'm trying to say, folks, don't live this life not thinking about souls. Don't call yourself a born-again Christian and never try to born again another Christian. Don't call yourself, listen, um, uh, uh, as, as a, a fruit tree begets a certain fruit, so doth a Christian ought to beget another Christian. We ought to be begetting other Christians. That's our job is to be getting people saved. So, um, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. What could you say about the bus ministry? The harvest truly is plenteous, but the bus workers are few. The bus captains are few. The bus drivers are few. The door runners and the door knockers are few. The name takers are few. The Sunday school workers or the Sunday school teachers are few. The buses are few. Folks, God can provide the means but he cannot make you do something you're unwilling to do. And I promise you, if you do it unwillingly, you won't do it for long. If you do it unwillingly, you won't do it for long. You say, well, wait a second, Brother Jake. You said some years ago, this isn't something that you wanted to do. You weren't willing. Folks, I can tell you, um, I'd say it was, it, man, 50% of the time I wanted to preach and 50% of the time I didn't want to. Because there was a war going on inside of me. Like I said this morning, well, which there's two dogs fighting inside of me. Which one won the most? The one I fed the most. And I'd feed those guys equally. My flesh, that old nature and that new nature. Man, I'd feed them. And it was an equal fight. Man, it was a, it was a fight for the ages written down in the, 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 uh, the history annals of my heart. I know the spiritual battles that were going on inside of me. And I knew there was something that when I would sit down and I would listen to others preach, I'd go, I should be up there preaching. And not because I'm better, but it was just something in there that said, I should be up there. Or you hear somebody preach and you go, oh, I could have done that better. <laughs> or, you hear, or you hear, and I'm not, I, I, I kid. But you hear something and you say, oh, where's my pen? Where's my pen? And you pull out and you start writing things down and you're like, oh man, that's a good sermon. And you go, wait a second. I don't even want to be a preacher. And here I'm writing sermons. This isn't supposed to be happening. But I'll tell you what, God ain't, God's not going to make you do it unwillingly. 
If you get up every morning and, and you got to, and you're, you're sucking on lemons, poor me, poor me, I don't want to do this. The bus ministry stinks and the ministries, it's hard. And I don't want to sing in the choir and I don't want to get up and go, I don't want to usher and I don't want to teach and I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to. I promise it won't be long until you're not. And you can take your I don't want to and hopefully be replaced by somebody who wants to. But most often cases, a replacement doesn't come right away. And it's the harvest that suffers. The harvest suffers because the laborers, number one, not only are they few, which means they're harder replacements to find, but the laborers are oftentimes unwilling. So as we start this bus ministry, don't get involved if you're not willing don't just hop on because it's the new thing. Don't just hop. Listen, if you say, you know what? It's new. It's a startup. And I'm going to commit the first month. Cool. Cool. Commit the first month. Say, I'm going to show up for the first month and help. And if you've got three months, say, I'm going to commit the first three months that the bus ministry starts. I'm going to, I'm going to commit three months to it. To help it get its legs. To help it get going, I'm going to, okay, that's fine. But if you say, no, I, this is something that God has called me into. This is what God wants me to do. Then bless God, you better buckle up, buckle in, uh, uh, and uh, uh, be in it for the long haul. The why of the bus ministry, number one, to get people saved. To get people saved. That's what it's got to be all about. Matthew chapter 13, verse 38 says, the field is the world. The field is the world. We've got to be able to reach out into the world, all the world. All the world. And I'll tell you right now, if you don't have a willing spirit, you're not going to have a, a spirit that wants to go far from home. You're not going to want to reach out into, uh, you're going to say, oh man, that's, that, but that's, yeah, it's in Fort Wayne, but goodness gracious, it's on the outskirts. I don't know if I want to travel that far to, to bring somebody to church. That big of a commitment, that big of a commitment to take somebody, to go get somebody. Um, I, I'm, uh, I had to go pick somebody up this morning and they said they'd be there and they said they'd be on the porch and they'd be waiting and they weren't there and they weren't waiting. So I sent them a message and I said, if you do that to me again, cause that's like the fourth time I'm not coming to get you. I said, cause number one, gas ain't free. And number two, it ain't cheap. And by the way, my time is valuable to me, especially on Sunday mornings. Like I stopped, I stopped reading my Bible and I stopped praying short of what I of what I wanted to do I was having a good time this morning I could have kept going if I didn't have to come and try to attempt to pick you up when you told me you'd be there and you're not there I'm not don't waste my time but for people who want to come people who want to be there we almost have to be willing to travel anywhere because they're worth it they're worth it and if we're not willing to go into our own city we're not going to be willing to send our dollars across the world if we're not willing to reach next to our neighbor, if we're not willing to reach next to the people that we sit with and we eat with and we break bread with and we work with, we're not going to be willing to do much other things. Brother Hiles said, uh, Brother Hiles, if you know the story of Brother Hiles, he had to take a stand on all kinds of different issues when he uh, became the pastor at, at um, uh, First Baptist Church in Hammond, Indiana. And um, uh, the church had some separation. People split from the church, and some of the members of the church stayed, and uh, a whole lot of them left. And as Dr. Hiles um, uh, gave the program on what he was going to build the church on and how he was going to build the church and what means he would use to produce a great soul-winning ministry and uh, uh, what he would use to do that was the bus ministry and all kinds of people didn't like that. They didn't like that. Um, uh, rich folks don't usually like poor folks. Rich folks don't, and this is, that's, if you'll go back and listen to his earlier things from, from uh, uh, his time there and uh, about him starting the bus ministry, he's, he's talked about that many times, about people saying, listen, if you start that bus ministry, we'll take our money and leave. We'll take our membership and leave. I'm the mayor of this town. I'll leave. I'm the, I'm the banker that holds the note on this property and we'll leave and we will cause you all kinds of problems. Brother I said, okay, bye, we'll take the bus kids. I'll take the bus kids. Uh, and we're not in a battle for that. There's nobody, there's no rich, pompous jerk around here saying, if you start a bus ministry, we'll leave. Because um, 
not only because Brother Hiles did it, but because it's the right thing to do. Well, then I'll just reiterate and echo what he has to say. Take your pompous, big rear end, pew warm and rear end and leave. Amen. But we don't have any about that. We're all we're all uh, 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 blue collar folk trying to do a, a, a trying to do a, a, a work for the Lord, and we're just going to keep plodding, and we're just going to keep doing what's right. So, so it says that we're supposed to go out into all the world. Matthew chapter eighteen, verse five uh, uh, and ten and eleven. Let me read them. The Bible says, "Whoso shall receive one such little child in my name, receiveth me." Receiveth me. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which is lost. Folks, great, uh, Jesus Christ laid the, 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 um, the stress of all the unwanted children and um, uh, and upon the people who didn't want them on his heart. He laid it on his teaching. And he said, if you don't receive these children as I would receive them, you're offending them. And that angers me. I'm proud of our church. We have been a church that has accepted red, yellow, black, white. They are precious in his sight. If we didn't believe that, I'd tell Brother Poaz, Brother Poaz, I don't want you singing that anymore. Because... Um, uh, Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, mostly the white, and he might like some others. We might have to do a, 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 a revision, right? No, and listen, bless God, there are a bunch of churches who get up and they sing that in their churches. They sing red and yellow, black and white, but then they do not allow bus captains to bring in black passengers. They get up and sing, Jesus loves the little children, but don't you bring in them Mexicans. Jesus loves the little children, but don't you bring anybody else that looks different. Jesus loves the little children. The, that's right there is loving in word and not in deed. That's hypocrisy. It's wrong. And there are little kids who would come to love Jesus and know Jesus and become something for Jesus if only churches would act out what they sing. And I've been proud of our church. We've not been, uh, uh, we're not a mega church. We're not even a big church. We're not even a medium church right now. But bless God, we're a faithful church, and we're an authentic church. We're a church who says, if we love you, we love you. If you're red, yellow, black, white, you've got a soul inside of you, and it's dying and going to hell, and I can't pay your bills, and I can't give you a new car, and I can't make all your problems go away, but I can, I can make sure that you're going to heaven when you die. I can give you the gospel of Jesus Christ, who said, I'll never leave you and never forsake you. I'll never let you go. I'll never let you down. I'll write your name in the Lamb's book of life, and I'll never forget you. And when you die, you can come to heaven and be with me. But in the meantime, I'll be with you. I'll be your friend. I'll never leave you. If you'll stick by my book and you'll obey my book, I'll give you a changed life and a transformed life. And that's what we've always been about. And that's what we're going to continue to be about. We've had our ebbs and flows and our ups and downs, our ins and outs. We've had our good times and our bad times. But I can tell you, the times of this book are going to stay the same. And Three Years Baptist Church may close its doors one day. Who knows? Another generation. Who knows? Time may go on to where this place becomes a shadow of a memory of a uh, Alzheimer patient and a ward somewhere that's forgotten about, tucked in a corner of a hospital somewhere, and you're the last surviving member of what used to be called Three Rivers Baptist Church. But Three Rivers can close up, and First Baptist can close up, and um, Brother Tom Malone's can close up, and Lee Robertson's can close up, and Curtis Hudson's can close up, and Lester Roloff, and R.G. Lee, and uh, um, um, uh, Brother uh, J. Frank Norris, and G.B. Vick, all these great Great churches have closed up, but you know what hasn't closed up? The Word of God. And the Word of God stands firm, and the Word of God stands strong, and it will never, ever, no, not ever, it won't ever change, and I'm just going to attach myself to an unsinkable ship, to a boat that does not take on water. No, listen, all kinds of people have attacked this boat. All kinds of people have attacked this ship. All kinds of people have tried to say, get down, you know, get do away with the bus ministry. It brings in the riffraff. Do away with the bus ministry. It brings on the undesirables. Bless God, what Bible are you reading? Jesus came to save sinners. But the pastor that gets up and reads from the apostle Paul, Paul said, I am the chiefest of sinners. Right. But, but come on, man. People are playing a game. They're playing a religious game. 
Let's not just talk about it. Let's be about it. So not if we start the bus ministry, but when we start our bus ministry again, it will be about others. Yes, others. This will our motto be. Because Jesus died for me, and I am, I was one of the others. I was one of the others, and Jesus brought me in and saved my soul. We're starting the bus ministry because we've been told, Go ye therefore into the highways. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid them to the marriage. So those servants went into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both good, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. When the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly. I'm sorry, I missed some verses here. Let me give you uh, the background. Jesus, uh, 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 a father, is having a wedding, and he invited all these guests. And these guests basically, number one, they didn't show. And number two, they made excuses of why they couldn't show up. So he said, Man, I've got this wedding feast going on, and I've got all the placements on the table. I've got all these robes. I've got all these garments. I've got all these places. I've got all these seats to fill. And no one to fill them. So he said, come here, servants. And the servants came and he said, okay, I'm the, the master of the wedding. He said, I want you to go out into the highways and the hedges. I want you to go out and find people and bring them to the wedding. Find the good and the bad and bring them in. So the servant came and showed these things to the, uh, and the master of the house was angry and said to his servant, go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded. And yet there is room. And the Lord said unto his servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Folks, Jesus is telling us, telling us over and over and over again that we need to go out and get people to come in to hear the gospel. If we can't get them to come in to hear the gospel, we take the gospel out to them. Come to the wedding feast. Come to the wedding feast. Folks, in the bus ministry. In the bus ministry, you're going to be using contests. We're going to be offering rewards. We're going to be having giveaways. We're going to be doing all kinds of things. And people would say, oh, that's bribery. Scripture tells me to compel them to come, to come in. Bribery is a reward for doing wrong. <coughs> Incentives are a reward for doing right. That is not a fine line. That's not um, a, a horse of a different color. That's a whole different ball game. It's a whole different ball game. A lot of people will criticize us. We'll criticize the bus ministry. We'll get some flack from the critics for running buses. But the Bible also says in Matthew chapter 10, he says, Whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water, only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. Folks, uh, uh, I, I, Jesus could have said, uh, it'd be a nice thing. It'd be a nice thing for us to do this deed. Or it'd be a noble thing for us to do this deed or to do that deed or to do some uh, a good little thing here and there. But instead, he appealed to our carnal uh, motivations. He said, compel them. Compel them to come in. He said that you will receive a reward for doing these deeds in my name. Hey, I'm not starting the bus ministry in the name of Jake Jackson. This isn't the Jake Jackson show. This isn't late night with, this isn't early Sunday morning show with Jake Jackson. This isn't, um, what's, the, what's the morning, is it called the morning show? CBS morning show? It's not me. It's not Regis and Kelly or Michael and Kelly or whoever it is now. Uh, uh, who? Ryan? Seacrest? He's still relevant? Wow, how old is he? Like 90? Huh? Friends, to Francisco, he is. He's got a big tattoo of him on his <laughs> uh, but, um, uh, uh, it's But this isn't the Jake show. It's not the come see how attractive the people at Three River. Have. Come see our winning personalities. No, we're running the bus ministry in the name of Jesus. We're doing it in the name of, that's why we've bought refrigerators for people in the name of Jesus. That's why we've helped uh, 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 widows that have, uh, uh, and, and single mothers and, and uh, uh, all kinds of people in need. We haven't done it, so, all right, now make sure, you know, make sure you tag us in our next social media post. 
Let everybody that you follows you on social media, let them know how great Three Years Baptist Church is. No, what? No. You need something? Man, here this is. By the way, do you know Jesus loves you? Amen. Now the way, he doesn't want you to die and go to hell? Did you know that? Did you know? And that's what, I mean, and I'm not, but folks, the Bible says that sometimes we got to be reminded, stirring up our memory, stirring up the things of remembrance. Who shall give, whosoever shall give a cup, who shall ever give a drink, who shall ever give food, whosoever shall clothe, visit while in prison. Jesus said, Lo, you've done it unto me. You've done it unto me. Number one, to get people saved. Number two, here's the number two reason. Number two is to provide transportation to people who can't, who can't make it to church otherwise. Right? Man, I wish I, I'd come to church if I had a ride. Well, let's get you a ride. Where do you live? Where do you live? I, you know, I, I find, sometimes I find it difficult. People are like, oh, man, I, I need a ride to church. I mean, at times I was picking up a reef and carry, Bill, Jesse Janik, Who else? And Francisco. That's right. And Miss Hillary was picking up Bill, Francisco, Ricky, Autumn. How, I don't listen. It may overlap. I don't remember all. But there, Brother Kevin and Miss Kathy, Doctor and Mrs. Pohazi, Mister and Mrs. Pip have done it before. Picking people up, driving people, dropping, going, doing it. I find it difficult. Hey, can you take so-and-so home when I know you live over here and they live like Francisco lives way out north where the rich people live. Uh, hey, Francisco. No, and he lives way out there, you know. Uh, it's because he's a way out there kind of guy. Uh, but um, provide transportation for people. If they want to come, let's make a way. Man, if we could just get more people to come to church, we could if everybody would pick somebody up. Could you imagine if everybody who was a, uh, a faithful attendee, brought one visitor to church. For basic math, we would double our attendance. <laughs> We'd double it. We'd be like, whoa, man, this is great. If everybody bought a, brought a visitor, that'd be great. It'd be fantastic. Uh, so next week, I'll be bringing, uh, well, no. I'll leave that there. Uh, uh, so, number one, why should we start the bus ministry? To see people saved. Number two, to provide transportation. You all come to church now, you hear? Sure, if we only had a ride. Oh, man, that's too bad. Guess we'll never see you. Well, we oh, we've got a bus on the parking lot. Let's run the wheels off that thing. Get people to church who wouldn't be able to make it to, uh, uh, to the service otherwise. When most people start a bus ministry, we envision great numbers of, um, of, uh, uh, of all kinds of different things. But uh, we've, even, we've even had people say, well, let's just start with vans. Let's start with vans. You know, just kind of darting out. But man, these big old beastie bus, a big old, a big old bus rolling down the, down the street is, is 10 times better. Um, uh, uh, so, so I need to, I'm closing. Number one, to see people saved. Number two, to provide transportation. Number three, number three, this is why, this is why, the third why is to make the local church, to make the local church as close as their neighbor. Now, they may live 10 blocks that way, and 13 blocks that way, and nine blocks that way, and eight blocks that way. But the point is, is for us to take our local church to them. Extending ourselves out, making our church as close as possible. Yes, we may be blocks away. We may be a mile or two or five away. But every Sunday morning, we bring our church to you. Not just through social media, but we bring that bus right there as an extension of 1406 Lombard Street. It's 1406 Lombard Street on wheels. That's what it is. And we take our church to them. Now, um, community churches, it's kind of a thing of the past where everybody in the neighborhood knows the pastor and they all wave to the pastor as he walks his little Yorkie dog down the street and he grows old with the community. And what happens is, is a community church 
everybody used to be pretty kind of religious, kind of churched. And so then this was back when this church was put here, this was probably a pretty heavily Methodist neighborhood. And if, and if you weren't Methodist, but, you know, they carried the same Bible and you got to know the, you probably came to church here. And it was a community church. And all kinds of people came and they walked here. A community church. We don't really have that anymore. We have people who live this, in this neighborhood who drive 45 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever it is to church one way. All right. Dr. And Mrs. Poe, has he used to drive an hour plus here from Geneva and sleep on the pews on Sunday afternoon to come to church here. They had a place here. They had a purpose here. They had a ministry here. It was worth it. But this community church, community church, it's a thing of the past. People drive all kinds of places and all kinds of distances to go to different places to buy all kinds of different things. They'll go uh, to places to their favorite grocery stores. They'll ride um, a, a, a public buses and public transportation. They'll take taxis for blocks and blocks and blocks in order to go get a special thing. Now we live in a day and age where you can order it online. I mean, I get that. But people are willing to travel. Why then? Why then should we rob them of any type of transportation to bring them to church? If they, man, you know how many people, do you know how many people in Fort Wayne would come to church, to Three Rivers Baptist Church, if they knew it existed and they knew that there was transportation to come and get them? I think a bunch. We've proven it. We've proven it with our past. The world has not changed. People have not changed. God's word has not changed. People are still people. People still want to be saved. People would still like a ride to church. So I'm not asking you uh, to pray with me if it's God's will for us to start the bus ministry. What I'm asking you is to pray with me to get it started. And to when we get it started, that God would put his hand all over it and let it begin to grow. What I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes. Um, I want to lead us in a prayer, and then I will dismiss us. Heavenly Father, I thank you for... Uh, as I pray, I want to take a moment to look around the room and look at uh, uh, Dr. Pohazi and Mrs. Sarah and Miss Hillary, Brother Francisco, uh, Brother Pip, my two sons, uh, and, and uh, Miss Jamie, and then others who are not here tonight who have served years and years in the bus ministry the safety that you have given, the protection from all kinds of different attacks or accusations or, uh, or anything. Lord, you've been gracious. And Lord, so many stories. I remember a bus pulling in one day and the front windshield was cracked. <laughs> And Brother Pip said, oh, they slammed on the brakes, and I hit the front windshield with my arm. And, Lord, that could have been scary. That could have been bad. There have been so many instances just like that where there's been protection. And it's not, I don't think it's any type of coincidence. I think it's because we're reaching people with salvation. We're bringing people to church, and we're taking church to people that otherwise wouldn't have it. They would know nothing of it. Lord, I would ask, uh, and I believe it's your will for us to start the bus ministry, for us to begin to put the pieces together and uh, uh, form the picture of the bus ministry, to have Brother Warren Storm and to have uh, 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 specialists in the bus ministry who've been at it for years and years. Uh, to be able to let folks who don't know what the bus ministry is, to learn it, to find out what it's all about. I, it, it, it's, I believe it's a medicine for the heart. Yeah, it's hard work. You can get hot in the summer and cold in the winter. Uh, but seeing kids 
seeing their faces, being familiar with them, seeing them light up when they see their favorite teacher, seeing them light up when they see their favorite bus captain or favorite bus worker or their friend from across town. And Lord, it's a blast having those kids on there and young people and adults. Lord, so what I would ask again is that you would do again what you've done for us in the past and give us a double portion. Lord, we want to see people saved. That's what it's all about. So help the why nots not to deter us um, and let the whys take the front seat. The point number one why was the most important reason to see people saved. Uh, and then let everything else just come as a plus. Now, Lord, we love you. We thank you for all that you've done for us. We'd ask that you'd keep us safe and um, make us prosperous as we obey your word. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Miss Jennifer.